All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, man. Fisherman of men, he said he gonna make us. He took spirit, he took some fishermen that was physical on earth fishermen and told them, I'm finna spiritually make you a fisherman of men now. He did that on purpose. He picked fishermen on earth to show you carnal and spiritual. Greater is he that is in you spiritual than he who you see in the mirror carnal why do the heathens rage carnal and imagine vain things spiritual see when you imagine things that's spiritual when you do things that's carnal you see um so today I was trying to step off in 2 Corinthians, but 1 Corinthians held me up. So I wanted to go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And man, I think I'm going to start at probably like, let's start at 4. So 1 Corinthians 4, 4. It says, for I know nothing by myself. And the minute you start thinking you know something by yourself, God going to take a step back and let you deal with it. But when you tell yourself in your heart that you weak and you need help, understand that the spirit is always willing to suffer the body, but the body ain't willing. The spirit is always willing, but the body is weak, bro. The body weak and everything. So we please the body in so many ways. Like the first way you please the body and you don't even understand it is relieving yourself in the bathroom. Um, when you relieve yourself, are you pleasing the spirit or the flesh? When you eating food, carnal food, not this spiritual meat, this manna from heaven. But when you eating food, what you pleasing? the spirit or the flesh when you when you have intercourse with whoever you have intercourse with are you pleasing the spirit or the flesh so if you continue to ask yourself that with everything then you would know how you please god because if you please in the flesh that you become an enemy that's enmity with God. Matter of fact, let me run to that real quick and then we'll come right back to Corinthians because the Corinthians got some got some heat in it. So we're going to go to Romans chapter 8 real quick. So we're going to do Romans 8. Let's just start at... Let's start at 5. 8, 5. For they that are after the flesh, they do mind things of the flesh. So if I'm living in my flesh body, that's what he mean by being after the flesh. That means that I'm always trying to add a ring to the flesh body, earrings to the flesh body. You know, after the flesh mean you, you, you pleasing the flesh with things that the flesh won't because the flesh going to continue to tell you, get that, get that, get that. What about that? That, 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 that. So, um, it say, for they that are after the flesh do mind things of the flesh. I'm in Romans chapter 8 at verse 5. But they that are after the spirit mind the things of the spirit. You got to understand that. It say, for to be carnally minded is death. That's to be earthly minded. To think like a human being, like a man is death. But to be spiritually minded is life. It say, let the same mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You know, arm yourself with that same mind. It say, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The, the physical mind, the, the mind that think like a human being or a man, that is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. They not trying to hear that. They like, yo, God, yo, God, where's the promise of your God coming? Since the fathers 
passed away, you know, uh, when is the promise of his coming? Since the father's sleep, everything been going on the same way as it was. You know what I'm saying? That's how we be, that's how we be looking at it. Like, uh, uh, you only live once. YOLO, you only live once. Go on and eat and drink and be merry. Tomorrow we die. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, let's keep going. It say, okay, all right, all right. It say, so um, Romans chapter eight, seven, it say, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. God is not worshiped with man hands as though he needed anything, can seeing that his hands made all things. But he say, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you in the flesh, you know you in the flesh because you love the things that you see on Instagram. This is that simple. You It say not only him that do the things that's on Instagram, you be like, I'm cool, shit. I just was laughing at it. I don't do it. No, not only them that do the things, but them that have pleasure in them that do the things. So if you get pleasure in love and hip hop, you guilty of what they doing. You know what I'm saying? And I know it sound weird, but it is what it is. We can't make up our own rules to worship God. Like he already gave us the game plan. We got to go with the flow. It's like you uh, we be upset because certain things happen in life, but we didn't never go in the scriptures and see where it happened already in life. The same thing that happened. You know what I'm saying? Like people be wondering like, why would, if it's a God, then why do people, kids get killed? Well, if you look at what he did to the Pharaoh, what you think the Passover is all about? The Passover was let my people go. And the Pharaoh, like, I ain't letting your people go. Who is you? God hit them with a plague. Boom. Here go some frogs. Then they can't even get the frogs out the land. You see what I mean? And they dying and it stank. If the Pharaoh came back, pray, please tell your God to get the frogs out the land. He cool. Let my people go. That's a, that's so carnally. It was the real king, the real Pharaoh. Moses was telling him, God said, let his people go. Spiritually, we talking about one man. Every We talking about a man. God telling your flesh, that's the Pharaoh, to let his people go. That's the spirit. God is not worshipped in flesh. God worshipped in spirit and truth. How do you worship God in spirit and truth when the spirit of truth come to you? The comforter going to come to you and reveal to you all things and bring them to your remembrance, the things that you have heard. But I it say, but you are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The spirit of God is the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of God. It's the same thing. Let me read it again. Romans chapter eight, verse nine and say, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God live in you. Now, if any man don't have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You see what I'm saying? It say, if the spirit of so be, if the spirit of God dwell in you, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, your body is dead because of sin. So your body is dead to sin when Christ is in you. You see? So the same way Christ was in Jesus. Jesus wasn't Jesus Christ. Jesus was Jesus of Nazareth. But the Christ was in, that's who they was waiting on. They wasn't waiting on no man that lived around the corner who we seen grow up. We seen him grow up. We seen his mama, his, his sisters right here with us right now. We know his brothers, his daddy was a carpenter. How he going to be the Christ, man? Y'all better go. So he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world ain't even know it was him. 
that's a tough scripture. That's John. That's John chapter one, verse 10. You know what I'm saying? He said he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world ain't even know it was him. He said, but to those who did accept him, even the ones that believed on his name to them, gave him to them gave he power to become sons of God. That's what I am. I'm a son of God. Not this flesh you looking at. This ain't the son. This ain't a son of God. What's inside of this flesh is a son of God. We have to tap into the spiritual side of our, our of our existence and understand that God whole purpose when he made Adam was to let his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He wanted, he made Adam so that he could put a spirit, he could put his, his spirit in him. You see what I'm saying? But we also, we know that Adam ran into some complications because the minute he made Adam shortly after that, he gave Adam some instructions. He said, you can delight yourself in everything that you see around here, but it's a tree in the midst, like in the middle somewhere of the garden that I don't want you to go into that territory. He didn't give him no reason why, but obviously Eve would find out real soon so when he went into that, when, when Eve went into that territory, of course, the spirit of Satan inhabited something that was smooth and subtle, pretty colors, didn't move fast, talk smooth, you know what I'm saying? And with the promise of a degree or college education, or more knowledge to be like closer to God. I guess Eve. I guess she, she, she. I guess she. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? She obliged. I guess you know. Um, she was with it, and I mean it hasn't changed even today. That's why you find so many. Um, you find so many women still chasing school this, you know, uh, late in their life and early in their life because it's instilled in them from the genes of Eve to exalt themselves above, you know, the stars of God. Who is the stars of God? The sons of God. But the woman was supposed to be the help meet. That meant someone who was acceptable and able to help the man out. You know what I'm saying? In, in a ton of ways. But, all right, let's get to it. Because I, I, I could get long-winded. I went and put me a hamburger on. I turned it all the way low. I said, it's going to be a short video. That ain't how it be going, though. When the Lord get on you and he wants you to talk, he 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 using your body to say his words. I'm speaking the oracles of God. You see what I'm saying? I ain't, if I was pushing my rap music when I used to rap and y'all reject me, I'd be like, man, skip y'all, man. Y'all ain't, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know what real music is. But this the word of God. My job is to just distribute it. I supposed to be able to preach this word with no eyeballs. I supposed to be able to preach this word blind. Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, I don't even supposed to be able to see the people I'm preaching this word to. Because when every man has heard the word on all four corners of the universe and they have either accepted it or rejected it, either or them the two, you could accept it or reject it. It's the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness. It ain't no free will to be all you could be or go to the army and all that. Once you choose what kingdom you in, then that kingdom going to choose whether you go to the army. 
You see what I'm saying? It's a spiritual fight. They say the weapons of our warfare are not earthly. They are not carnal, but they mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down the imagination and every hot thing that is all itself against the knowledge of God. You feel me? You see what I'm saying? Like for real. So don't even play the game. It's instilled in every human being that it had an existence before it was put in a body. And you, and when you find out, you will be staring in the mirror and you will touch yourself like this really me. Like, dang, I'm stuck in this body. It's I, Then the thought come in your head like I got to go through death. Like, yeah, that earth suit going to expire. But what's inside that earth suit that make them eyes get wide, that make that arm come up, that make that arm go down, that pick up and drink some water. Why well, needed that water? You can tell. That's living water. I'm, look, I'm going to say this. If it's it's your it's the spirit in you that make you do this. Your body just don't go off doing nothing they want. Because if that was the case, everybody you seen who was beautiful to you, your body would just automatically walk up on them and hug them, get the whisper into them in their ear. And it don't work like that. It's your spirit to tell you if this is a good idea or not. Um, let me think. Your spirit gives you discernment. Oh, she with a man. I better not say nothing or I'm going to have a fight on my hands. You see what I'm saying? But then you got the spirit of Satan that, that, that pushes boundaries. His job... Satan don't care if you go to church. You go to church once a week, twice a week. You ain't learning no word. You stomping. You claim you stomping on the devil head and the devil of spirit. The devil inhabiting stuff. Well, you don't know he inhabiting stuff. Look on the corners of America. The devil inhabiting stuff. These ain't the actions of these human beings. It's what's inside of the body that's making the body do that. Why do you think every group of people that is a entity to act alike? Because it's the same spirit inside of them. Why you think the Bloods and the Crips, they only wear different colors, but everybody got their pants under their booty. You see what I'm saying? Why do you think all the women got on wigs? And everybody painting their face and trying to look different. Green hair, red hair, orange hair. This is a spirit that's inside of the people that's making them act this way. And ain't nobody countering it. So if don't nobody counter it, then it's a, it's a good idea. You see what I'm saying? If I can make myself look different. Don't nobody want to be how God made them. God is love. So you can't tell me if you're going against what God's, it, it, whatever God word, whatever he left for us to, to give reverence to. You can't tell me that you a son or a daughter of God. If God is love and you want to get some type of change made to your body to, to draw more attention to yourself. Then what you're doing is you taking the attention away from God and you putting it on you. So right there, you got an abomination. Luke chapter 16, 16 said, no, chapter 16, 15. It said um, that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. So if you highly esteem the 4th of July, abomination of God. If you highly esteem Christmas, abomination of God. If you highly esteem a woman, a car, a, some type of dogs, if you highly esteem money, if you highly esteem jewelry, clothes, sex, food, Whatever it say, that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. Hate less God more. God is love. God don't have love. He 
is the emotion of love. Ecclesiastes say, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter nine. It say, no man know either love or hate by all that's in front before them. No man know. So Ecclesiastes chapter nine at the end of the verse one. So I skipped a little. So I'm gonna read the whole thing. It say for this, for all this I have considered in my heart that's spiritual. He didn't say for all this I have considered out my mouth. He said in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hands of God. So if somebody built a Sears Tower. And whoever put the blueprint together for that, that that was the hand of God. God said, "Did not my what house could you build me? Did not my hands make build all these things, create all these things?" However you put that, I'm just paraphrasing. It say, "And their work are in the hand of God, and no man know either love or hate by all that is in front of him." So just by what's presented in front of you, you don't know what love is. You don't know what hate is. You don't know what love is. You don't know what hate is. Love is the kingdom of light. Hate is the kingdom of darkness. God is love. So obviously his opposition would be hate. So God is love. Satan is hate. The kingdom of light is love. The kingdom of darkness is hate. No man knows either God or the devil by all that's in front of him. No man knows love or hatred by all that's in front of him. God is love. Hate is the opposition or the opposite of love. So obviously no man knows God or the devil by all what's in front of him. We just think, Man, that was mean to do. That was nice to do. That was mean to do. For you to in for you to even get these emotions up, uh, for you to even have the emotion of love inside you, that you would have to have God inside you. Other than that, if for you to have the emotion of hate inside you, you would have to have the father of hate inside of you. You see what I'm saying? Like, all right, let's keep it moving, though. So, all right, I was in Romans. So, all right, let's, let's swing back to the first Corinthians. We was doing chapter four, and I'm just going to fly through it too much talking. It say, for I know nothing. So, I'm in chapter four, verse four, first Corinthians. It say, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I here by just, am I here by not justified, but he that judge me is the Lord, therefore judge nothing. Therefore, that's why I could, I could preach this word with my eyes closed because it don't matter who it hit. It only matter who get it. You see what I'm saying? It's a like judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of your heart. He going to make manifest what your heart really thinking. And then you're going to be convicted and then it say, and then shall every man praise God, praise of God. And these things, brothers, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. A man? I don't care who it is. It say, it say, uh, that you, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written and that none of you be puffed up or against one another. For who made you different from another person? Who made that? Who made your nose pointy? Made they nose fat? Made they eyes big? Made they eyes low? Made they chin short or, or long or it say for who make you different from another and what have you got that you did not receive if you feel like you beautiful if you feel like you got body parts on you that's incredible and everybody love it he said 
who gay it say and what have you what have what have you that you did not what do you have that you did not receive now if you did receive it why do you glory as if you did not receive it you glory in it how pretty you is like you didn't receive that God could take away your pretty. You think you thick, got a nice shape, God will put you in a wheelchair. You think you handsome and all swollen, you know, God, don't play with the Lord, man. He'll break you down. You got pretty ways in your hair, nice, nice. What? God will put a ball spot up there. Quit, don't play with the Lord, man. He a spirit. So he be right there. The man we kicked to the curb, like, bro, get on up out of here, woo, woo, woo. Man, I was just trying to tell you that the Lord told me to tell you, so I don't want to hear nothing about your God. Bro, get up out of here before we jump you. You know, whatever you're going to do. You see what I'm saying? Be careful how you entertain strangers. Man, I feel like, I feel like we went crazy real quick, shoot, huh? All right, I'm going to go ahead to 2 Corinthians real quick and get a couple more in because I don't know how I'm at 30 minutes. So 2 Corinthians, I'm going to start at chapter 4. Uh, chapter 4, late in photo. I'm gonna, let me see. Let's go four. Let's go to 415. Um, it says, for all things are for your sake that the abundant, Abundant mean a lot, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we we don't faint, but we ought to, but though our outward man, that's this flesh body, he said, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction which is only but for a minute, it worked for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. That's what I've been trying to tell y'all. I got to let the Bible tell y'all though, because I sound like a, a fool for the Lord saying that. But he said right there, while we look not at things which are seen, but we look at things which are not seen for the things which are seen temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Let's say, so let's go to five. Let's go to five, five. It say, now he that have worked us for the self same thing is God who also have given unto us the earnest of the spirit. He has given unto us what, what, what he required us to have of the spirit. It say, therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. So the body is a home for the spirit. Once the, bo once the spirit come out the body, then we'll be in the presence of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? It say, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith that God is going to come and redeem us and give us salvation. Lord, continue to bless us to stay on that narrow road that leads to eternal and everlasting life. Take us off that broad road that that. Everybody on that broad road, smoking and drinking, partying, having fun. But the broad road leads to destruction, eternal destruction. So, Father, bless us all, Lord. Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Back to it, though. He said, um, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body, the spirit, that's talking to you right now. I'm the body not talking, but the body got the vocal cords and the and the, and the, and the speech and the hand to move. You know, my spirit could be doing doing all this stuff, like, but it wouldn't be a body doing it for you to see it. But the body brings the spirit 
now the spirit bring the body to life, but the body gives the spirit of existence for flesh. You know, I mean, for the for earth people, earth people, we don't understand because they don't teach us this in school. The only thing they teach us is the anatomy, your hands, your nose, eyes, brain. They talk about blood, bones, but they ain't telling you what that soul is and what that spirit is. You know, when they when a plane, something happened on the plane, they say 20 to 280 souls. They don't say 280 people. 280 they say 280 souls because your soul is accounted for the man you see what i'm saying he god created a man and then he breathed into his nostrils then he became he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life then he became a living soul but before that god just created a dead soul he had to breathe do that extra step and give him life you feel me so, yeah, I ain't going to hold y'all long. Let me do this. Um, wherefore, we labor that whether we present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. We all going to receive the things that we done while we was in this body. It explained all this stuff in the scriptures. Why the preachers ain't told us none of this stuff. If the preachers would have been preaching this instead of prophesying smooth things to us, then we would it would have caused us to change a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? God word ain't that harsh. It's harsh on the flesh, man. That's why don't tell me a man wrote the Bible. A man must have been off something. He was off that Holy Spirit that wrote the Bible because he definitely wasn't thinking like a carnal man. The Bible against a man. The Bible is against the flesh man in every single way. The flesh, the Bible is against the flesh. The flesh is of the devil. You know what I mean? These bodies ain't nothing but the devil wrapping paper. But God trying to say, let me get in it. I get in it and cause it to change. I can get in your body and do exactly what I did to Jesus' body. I put my Christ in it, and he became Jesus Christ. If I put my Christ in you, you become your name Christ. It's the spirit, bro. Stop looking at the body. Look at, look at what's in it. I should be able to look at somebody's shadow and tell what spirit in there because of the actions. Is they twerking? I see, all I see is shadow. Is they twerking? Or is or is the shadow or, if, or is the shadow all I'm seeing is punching on the shadow. That's the spirit of Satan. Whatever you're doing, even if they humping, if they whatever, I you should be able to see the spirit of a man through his shadow. Whatever his shadow doing, you should you don't even gotta see the man, but what the shadow doing. You know what I'm saying? You see a shadow playing basketball, you'll say, "Oh, that brother playing basketball." But then when you see that same brother that was playing basketball take a break. And he taking, he light up something. You can see the, you can see it in the shadow. Then you can see the smoke in the shadow, and you know he uh, defiling the temple. You know what I'm saying? Like, not saying that that's not a man of God, and you could be a, you, you don't gotta, you know. But I'm just saying though, like, you should be able to look at somebody's uh, shadow and know what's in them. You can tell a tree by its fruit. All praise to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Brother Smith, here again, rightly dividing the word of truth. A workman need not to be ashamed, baby. Y'all have an excellent night, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm finna get that hamburger in me I was talking about earlier. You feel me? Yeah. Hey. Hate less, love more, or you could love more and hate less, however you want to do it. But this is God, and this is this is Satan, and this is God. God is love. Satan is hate. Let's love, let's love more, and let's hate less. Let's hate less. I don't got it down, Pat. I didn't come to you with the wisdom of man's words, but the power of the Holy Spirit, he said. Salute.